What is up guys? So today I'm here with yet another episode of D3 Live and today we're going to be talking about the new MacBook Air refresh. So of course if you haven't been keeping up with it, it looks like in the next week or so, and perhaps even the next few days, Apple will be releasing the brand new MacBook Airs. Now of course the original MacBook Air which came out around a year or so ago has been really well received. You know, it had good prices, much better than the original MacBook Airs and the designs and everything were absolutely top notch. In fact it's probably one of my favorite laptop designs of all time just, just as across the board period. Um, but now it looks like they're going to be doing some refreshes. Now of course, to, you know, on the good side, they're not going to be doing anything as far as the hardware goes. So we should have the same designs, the same very small 11 and 13 inch designs on the MacBook Airs. But where it will differ is some of the internals. Uh, so of course we should have the mini display port removed and swapped out with a uh, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt port. Uh, of course Thunderbolt works pretty much the exact same as mini display port was the added bonus of being able to be a really, really, really fast interconnect. Um, on top of that, it also will have some big internal changes, including the new Sandy Bridge processors. So one of the only major problems with the MacBook Air when it first came out was the fact that it came with a Core 2 Duo processor. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with Intel and CPUs and all that kind of stuff, it's basically it's kind of old. I believe it came out a couple years ago. Certainly not the fastest that you can get in a even a nice thin and light laptop. So it looks like they will be replacing those with the new Core i5s and Core i7s. As far as I know, there will be one Core i5 model and there will be two Core i7 models. And of course, you can pick you know an 11 inch and 13 inch and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you definitely should be get a lot more processing power in the new MacBook Airs, which should be very, very helpful if you're interested in doing video editing or doing any kind of thing that's hardcore on the MacBook Air, it will make it much, much faster. Uh, now beyond that, I don't see a ton of changes. I hope that we would see 4 gigabytes of RAM standard in the MacBook Air. That's one thing, 2 gigabytes in a $1,000 computer, it's a little cheap, especially since you really can't get at it yourself and you know upgrade it and whatnot. So I really like to see if they can upgrade it to 4 gigabytes. And uh, most likely we will probably just see the integrated graphics in the Core i5s and i7s. I don't really see them adding any kind of dedicated solution, but you never know. Uh, beyond that, I expect that pretty much everything should stay the same. So like I said, 11 inch, 13 inch, she'll st should still see the same keyboards. They may be backlit, but I wouldn't really count on that. Um, and the prices should hopefully stay the same, although I wouldn't be surprised if the 13 inch does get bumped up a little bit on the high end if you choose to get the very uh, maxed out uh, Core i7 model. For the second segment of D3 Live, we're taking live questions from everyone in the chat. So of course every episode of D3 Live is filmed in front of a live audience. We've got quite a few people in the room right now, so let's just take a couple of questions. Do I think they'll release the tiny 64 gigabyte version again? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, even though that's not a ton of storage for a laptop like the MacBook Air, which is really thin, really light, not totally meant to be a you know normal system that's gonna you know be carrying all your data and everything around. You know, typically you're gonna have some kind of storage elsewhere outside the computer. I think 64 gigabytes is okay, considering it does have a solid state drive. And in fact, that's one of the great things about the MacBook Air is that it does have that solid state drive, which just makes it so much faster, so much snappier, so much more responsive than a typical laptop would be. So even though 64 gigabytes is certainly not a lot, I think a lot of people can get by with that. And I think it's definitely worth it to get in at that low $1,000 price point, which is not technically that low, but it, it keeps it from getting any higher than that, I suppose. Um, Am I going to buy the iPod Touch 5th generation? Uh, perhaps. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I, 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 I typically try not to decide if I'm going to buy anything, anything before I actually see the information. See, oh, it's got this and that and you know, kind of get a little bit more information because now all we have mostly is rumors. But more than likely, I probably will. I do like the iPod Touch. It's, it's a pretty handy little device. So yeah, I, I'll wait and see, but more than likely, I will. Um, how will the new MacBook Air compete with new laptops? Well, I think the MacBook Air is really... It almost sounds kind of like a little cheesy, but I think it really almost is in a class of its own. There is really no other laptop that you can buy that has the same thinness and the same excellent, excellent design. I mean, there are other thin laptops, but a lot of them are just, well, not a lot of them. I have never seen any other laptop that is built as nicely as, you know, it's thin across the board, is light, and it's just so well built. I mean, not it's not built out of plastic or anything like that. It's built out of aluminum. And so there are other laptops that are, you know, they go, oh, well, this is thin and light. Oh, it's got specs, whatever. But I don't think that there is a laptop on the market today that can match it as well in specs, in price, and in design. I just don't think it's possible. So I really, it's kind of hard to say, oh, well, that's, you know, it's, I can compare it to this or that. So, uh, yeah, I think that, that hopefully that answers your question. I just think the MacBook Air is a fantastic little laptop, especially once it gets these new additions. Uh, what are the advantages between Opera and Chrome? Which is better? Um, well, in fact, I will be doing a browser test. If you guys are familiar, I do browser tests from time to time on my channel when new stuff comes out. 
And so more than likely I'll be doing it sometime next week a browser test between Opera and Chrome. So I don't want to get into which is better just yet. Hopefully the browser test will help answer that question. But I will say the new version of Opera 11.5 is fantastic. I really, really like it. Um, you know, there's a couple of new features as far as the speed dial and that kind of stuff. Um, but what I really like is the UI. It's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more sleek. A little bit smaller. Uh, before I thought it was kind of a little bit too big, almost like cartoonishly big, like Chrome is. Um, but they really pared it down. I think they did a great job. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to testing out Opera as far as you know the specs, or not the specs, but the uh, the times and the scores and all that kind of stuff. But just right off the bat, I really do like Opera as far as the design and all that kind of stuff goes. Will there be new colors for the new MacBook Air? Uh, well, there was a rumor that we may be getting a black MacBook Air. Of course, if you guys are not familiar, typically laptops. Apple laptops used to be just white, and then they came out with the aluminum ones, which are, of course were kind of silver. Um, but they w there was at a t uh, at one time a black MacBook Air, MacBook original MacBook, just just straight MacBook, uh, you know the plastic one. Um, there was a black version of that. However, they don't make that anymore. But there was a uh, there was some talk that they may be uh, bringing that back with the MacBook Air, with uh, you know the standard kind of silver aluminum finish as well as some kind of black. Uh, personally, kind of like the backlit keyboard, I think it's possible, but I wouldn't definitely you know, plan on getting one. I mean, I, it very well might happen, but like I said, I'm not really sold on it. It's definitely gonna, we're definitely going to be able to see that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this week's episode of D3 Live. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button up above. You'll be notified with all of my new content. And, of course, you'll also be notified when I go live for D3 Live. So not only can you watch the episodes on YouTube, but you can also come watch the show live.